Morning, ladies and germs. Uh, today I have a um, an issue with my uh, refrigerator. See, I uh, went to pull some ketchup out of the refrigerator to have with my delicious French fries, and my ketchup was warm. No one should have to have warm ketchup. So <laughs> I go into my freezer, and it's cold. And I noticed that there's uh, there's ice built up in the back. And, oh boy! So that's, I'm hoping that it's not the uh, the heater element in the back. So first thing I did was go behind underneath in the bottom of the fridge, and you put your hand back there and see if there's air coming through. I didn't feel any air. So, I mean, the whole thing is blocked up with ice. Uh, as you can see here, I got the uh, refrigerator. This was all ice. When I started cleaning out the uh, the food out of the, out of the freezer here, uh, it's a typical hot point, run of the mill, the cheapest thing that you'll find in a in a rental. So uh, these two screws here, this one here, this one here, and there's two back here, and those come out. This this uh, this tray comes out. Uh, this lifts out, and it's got some hooks on. And uh, we'll take a look at it behind here. Uh, I believe I can hear it. There's ice packed up behind here. And there's a fan back in here. Uh, and that fan blows cold air down into the refrigerator itself. And uh, there's no air coming out from underneath. Uh, from in inside the fridge. So, yeah, it tells me this thing's blocked up with ice. So let's let's verify that. Yeah, so as you can see here, that thing's loaded with ice. So if something's not turning the uh, the heater on to defrost it. Okay, so let's look at the defrost timer. We have the uh, thermostat here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to bypass the thermostat temporarily. Just to uh, to see if the heater turns on. So if I can isolate the heater, I know that it's either the uh, the delay timer or the thermostat. I'd much rather it be the timer. <laughs> uh, thermostats, I have no idea how you can fix those. I have no idea. I would not know how to do that. That's out of my field of expertise. And uh, I don't know. I don't even think they have videos on how to do that. I think once they go, they go. But um, I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not an HVAC guy. I don't know. But I do know you can bypass it, and I'm going to do that now using um using a, a 12 gauge uh, jumper wire. All right. So I got the uh, the thermostat bypassed. And right now I'm listening for the uh, heating element to heat up. And, uh, usually you can just hear it like dropping water that's melted or the ice that has melted onto the coil and you can hear it like splish and get, you know, evaporating off. And uh, it would be right around in here. I know the, I know the camera sucks here. Hold on. See if we can get this. I know it would be right around this area here, and you can usually see through it. I'm hoping it's not the thermostat. I'm hoping it's not this guy here. Let me let me keep this plugged in for about 10 minutes, and I'll come back and see if it, uh, because sometimes it does take a few minutes for it to heat up all the way. Yeah, let's do that. I'll come back in 10 minutes. I don't know. I don't know if you can see this. I got the fan running now. I don't know if you can see that back there, but it's dripping. So the heating element is on now, and I think the light is too bright for you to see it. But yeah, it's active. So, and the thermostat's back on. So, not the heating element. I'm thinking it's the timer now. We're going back to the timer. Yeah, so there's the model number there. All right. 
uh, four terminals right here on the bottom here there's usually four uh, four terminals on a timer not always but this particular model does uh, this is the main power in so this should be common right and the other power so your 120 coming in would go here and here and it basically it's just a relay so at all times there's always a connection between this terminal and that terminal or that terminal and this terminal so the switch the timer in here uh, determines whether this terminal is active or this terminal is active and they should never be on at the same time uh, you can test that with an ohmmeter uh, basically testing from this point while it's uh, in any position on the back this has a, a a screw back here and you can turn it you can actually hear it click and at one point you'll hear it click like a hard click there we go and from that point on uh, let's see in this particular model it's uh, pins two or three and two would be active okay and when this is in the when it's not switched on the hard click it would be these two pins here all right uh, so that's all we're doing uh, while it's being powered up this should make a ticking sound like tick 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 it should hear you it's you you should hear that uh, some of them are really loud. You don't even have to put your ear up to it. Uh, what I did was I used the, uh, an old technique. A lot of mechanics know about this. It's the, uh, the mechanic stethoscope. And you put your screwdriver up to the device. And you put your ear on this end of the screwdriver. And using the, <laughs> using the magic of vibration, you can actually hear the inside of things. And you can try that with a lot of different things. Just make sure you don't get a, you know you know because this will be energized while uh, you're testing this so you don't want you know you, you don't want your screwdriver to come flying down it so uh, I noticed there's three screws in the back here let's open it up see what we can look at maybe there's something there we can play with I imagine just from the design of it and I can see that there's uh, some threaded bosses right here and it looks like they coincide with this screw and along with this right here so we should be able to get to the entire mechanism so at first glance I thought that these two terminals here were supposed to be together and they were using that wire as a uh, as a as a as a fuse turns out those are the windings to the to the motor duh Okay, and that makes sense because they actually go to the the, the, the correct terminals for, for powering the motor. Uh, so while it was powered up, I uh, I opened it up, being careful not to uh, drop the uh, the gearing system out, and uh, I actually popped the back open up, and there's a tiny little gear in there, and you can see the thing just. Flipping around, going crazy, doing its job. Yeah, so you can hear it. It's uh, I've reinstalled everything and uh, some ice cubes ready to go. That's about an hour into it, and she's freezing up. And uh, there's no ice on the back wall here. Uh, it looks like looks like we got it. And uh, all I did was I. Uh, I pretty much just banged on the timer a little bit, and uh, I was able to hear it tick again. It was it wasn't ticking, and uh, so it was the defrost timer itself. And uh, so there's that. All right, success. <laughs> Thank goodness, because it's a warm day and I need my ice. All right. Well, <laughs> that's it. Good night, ladies and germs. It's a warm one today. Thanks for watching. Take care.